I forgot to mention one important point in my last video titled Victim of Centrelink Robo Debt. When somebody receives money from Centrelink, what do they do with it? They spend it, of course. They may not spend it wisely, but they certainly spend it. They buy groceries, pay the rent, they might go down to the pub and have a couple of beers with their mates, they might play the pokies or buy some cigarettes. Most Centrelink recipients would certainly spend most of their money in any given fortnight. So when the government give people money, they surely must know that most of it is being spent. When they hit somebody with a Centrelink debt a few years down the line, they can't possibly expect that person to have any of the money left. To say that an individual was overpaid over the last three years, and therefore must pay back the government, is like giving somebody a gift card for their birthday and then asking for it back three years later. It's silly to think that they would still have the unspent gift card. Not only that, but by demanding back a payment that has already been spent, that doesn't just hurt the individual, that also hurts the economy. Centrelink recipients, due to their low income, are spending most of their money, in turn directly stimulating the economy. The economy operates on one simple principle. When people spend money, the economy grows. If they don't spend money, the economy stagnates. So when Centrelink hit people with debt, Recipients must cut back their spending in order to pay back the government. This has the opposite effect of stimulating the economy. It hurts the economy. There's an easy fix to all of this. A law should be enacted that states that any money given to an individual by Centrelink is their money. It no longer legally belongs to the government. If Centrelink happens to overpay somebody, due to their incompetence or otherwise, they cannot chase down the debt. The debt will not exist. The money is no longer theirs. If somebody defrauds Centrelink, well, that's a different issue where legal action can be taken. In that case, a debt could exist and could be chased down by Centrelink. This new law would have two benefits. One, recipients will never have to fear having a sudden debt to pay back to Centrelink. They can safely live their lives spending or saving their Centrelink benefit as they see fit. Two, it will incentivize Centrelink to make sure that they calculate payments correctly. If they overpay people due to an administration error, well, that's on them. They should improve their staff training and processes. Furthermore, they should make sure that their fortnightly income reporting process is easy and accurate. Currently, recipients of some payments must regularly report their income to Centrelink via an online form. I suppose there's also a way to do it via the phone. The online form, as my wife and I have experienced, is extremely prone to error. You can enter any amount in and it's not checked. You could lie and enter a lesser amount, with the chance of being caught and asked to repay the debt. Or you could just accidentally enter the wrong amount and be hit with an unexpected debt sometime in the future. You could accidentally enter too much income and therefore be underpaid. As my wife and I have found out, the online form also allows you to enter in any name for the business that you worked for. Some companies' legal names are completely different to their trading names, so it can cause a lot of confusion. You might work for 7-Eleven, but the actual name of your employer is RC & Co. As I found out, this matters. Centrelink duplicated my income due to me working for a company called Bill's Home Tutoring, but the actual ABN was registered as William J. Smith. The form does have an ABN search tool that allows you to enter the Australian business number, which then returns the legal name of the business. But I've found that sometimes the legal business name is too long for the actual form. It throws an error when you try to submit it. I have made a complaint about this to Centrelink, but nothing seems to have been done about it, so I'm not holding my breath. Isn't that amazing? An online government form where you can't even enter the correct legal name of a business due to its name being too long. It forces the user to modify the business name to suit the text field. It's ridiculous. A possible solution for this error-prone form would be to require the user to upload their most recent payslip. The user does not need to enter in any other information. Centrelink employees would then be tasked with entering the correct information in order to calculate the correct payment. User error would be removed. Whether or not this is a good solution or not doesn't matter, but it should be Centrelink's duty to make sure that the reporting process is accurate and as error-free as possible. As I mentioned in my last video, Centrelink's robo-debt program is a sham. It should be gotten rid of. When you hit a normal Centrelink recipient with a big debt, you're not only hurting that individual, but you're also directly taking money out of the economy. That individual will no longer be able to spend that money, and therefore, there'll be direct economic consequences. That's not good for the individual. That's not good for the economy. What do the government fear? Is it really so bad that poor people are spending a little bit more money? Is it really so bad that they are using their overpayments to help grow the economy? 
It's not as if the individuals are aware of the overpayments. The government should look at it in a different light. Instead of being the harsh disciplinarian demanding back every last cent, why not give poor people a break and just accept that the money will naturally flow back into the economy, helping Australia? When Centrelink hits an individual with an unexpected debt and forces them to pay it back, that not only hurts the individual, that not only hurts the economy, that hurts Australia. Centrelink, what is your purpose? Is it to help? Or is it to hurt? Centrelink's robo-debt has got to go.